Give me a little intro there, Gomer. listening to the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co-hosts, Beth, Brian, and Kirsten. So this week we are going to talk about some of our favorite quick services and go over some news as per usual. Um, so first thing that we got to talk about this week is that Disney filed a patent for the new Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster, the ride system. Uh, it looks like it's a rotating car that... Who put this in here? Because I read very little of this. I put this in here. So basically, from what it sounds like to me and the pictures that I'm looking at, it's kind of like a Omnimover system combined with a roller coaster car, it looks like. It essentially pivots about the middle, you know, rotating axis, just like a uh, the Omnimover does, like on the Haunted Mansion or uh, Journey of the Little Mermaid. But obviously, you're on a roller coaster, so... Uh, it's pretty cool. Apparently, the reason for the patent is that in order for it to rotate about the middle, it has to have its own um, like battery power system to actually control the motors that make it rotate. Um, so it has uh, apparently, as it pulls up to the loading and unloading dock, it recharges the batteries every time. So that's what the patent is actually for. But this looks really cool. I'm kind of Curious to see how they implement this into the ride, if they're using it kind of like they use the Omnimover systems, like focus guest attention at certain things, but I don't know. So it's not for the actual like car itself, it's for the battery pack? Or is it for so, the whole thing? Um, I believe from what I read, the, the patent itself is for actually how it's going to, to charge it. Um, but... With that, they show all the the images of the rotating roller coaster car in the middle. Because I want to feel like I, I'm not that knowledgeable on other roller coasters, but I feel like other roller coasters have this sort of rotating cart idea. I don't know how they go about charging it and storing the energy and everything to power it, but um, I wouldn't. I don't know if Disney would be able to get a patent on just the rotating aspect of it. Well, it sounds like. It could be. Have y'all ridden um, what Forbidden Journey, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey? Yes. Yeah. It seems like they are combining that type of system or something similar to a uh, flight of passage with like an actual roller coaster train, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how I envision yeah. it is like something that moves you and directs your attention from one side to the other, etc. But you're still like on a roller coaster train. Mm hmm. I don't know. I mean, I could be totally wrong. That's just how I see it. (laughs) Well, either way, we were promised a pretty revolutionary new system. Um, It looks like we're getting it one way or the other. So this is pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm really stoked about this. Now, my question for you guys. um, We got this announcement a while ago. Don't you feel like the like technology and everything that should have came with it probably should have been patented around then? Or does this mean that they're like finally getting into this phase of building? Like to me it just feels really late in the game to get this. I I feel like Disney's just kinda holding the cards close to their chest. They might have known, you know, I'm sure they filed for this long, long ago when the first concepts for this were coming out and I don't know. I'm not sure how how much they know about the process and maybe it just now got approved, but they had a pretty good idea that it was going to get approved. I'm sure they wouldn't just kind of like throw this up in the air and hope they got this patent before, you know, they were moving forward with the ride. And I think it's also, like you said, cards close to the chest because anytime they file a patent, like people find out immediately. There are people, you know, who like spend their days looking this up. So I'm sure that they know once they put it out there, like it's out there, you know? So maybe mm-hmm. they just wanted to wait. That's a good That's point. A good point. So our next news topic that we have is that 
Disney announced a new DVC resort um, coming to the former location of River Country. It's a nature-themed resort that we have not yet gotten confirmation on when it's going to be named, um, but there's some concept art online for it now. Pretty exciting, even though I don't stay DVC. They must must be making a killing on DVC for two, like two of the three resorts that they're building to be DVC. Yeah, and like they keep restricting the rules on resale, so... I don't know. And they, anytime anybody sells, like if you own DVC and you decide to sell it, like Disney has right of first refusal. So they can buy it from you and then sell it, resell themselves. And then like it stops them from, well, it makes them money because like it's not being resold on the normal market. I don't know. Hmm. I love renting DVC, but with things the way they are, I'll probably never own it. So whatever. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever own DVC, though it is something I would really enjoy having, but I just, I can't see that being a thing for me. I mean, I don't think it's worth it anymore to buy it from the normal market because they have restricted so much of what you get. Like now, if you buy it resale, you can't even go to like the Top of the World Club and stuff like that um, or get like the discounted annual passes. You have to buy it from Disney to get that stuff. And it's too expensive to buy from them. I mean, it's just, I'm not paying that much money. So. Yeah, I agree. And kind of to Beth's point, I was just like looking over this article again and it says on here that with the three other resorts that are underway, this means that they're bringing 1700 new DVC rooms over the next four years. Like, that's a lot of space to to put people i'm telling y'all renting is the way to go like i actually did the math tonight um when i was talking to my mom about planning our trip for the 50th and i looked up like renting a standard um view two bedroom at bay lake tower renting a two-bedroom dvc versus just doing a normal standard room at the contemporary in the main hotel not a garden suite but in the main hotel and it was the same price and you're getting like Mm. so much more stuff like a full kitchen two bedrooms two bathrooms like a living area i mean the value if you're gonna stay at a at a deluxe resort anyway it's so much more valuable to rent dvc yeah if you're gonna stay dvc or not dvc if you're gonna stay deluxe it makes a lot more sense to rent but I just, I don't think I'd use the amenities that would be needed to make it worth it. Yeah. I think it's really nice with the kid, like having a kid. Um, Oh yeah. It's probably perfect for you. Perfect for you. Yeah. Just because you have like a kitchen, you can go home and take a nap, like you can make breakfast. Um, But it wasn't as worth it whenever it was just me and Will. To our final news topic this week, um, we don't really have an article to plug with this one, but price changes were put into place this last week for uh, this year through, or the rest of this year through 2019. Um, I don't have any price numbers to report on that, but I know we always like to talk about when the price changes go into effect and what this means for us for Walt Disney World. Oh, Actually, I do kind of have something to say about that because someone sent us an email. So let me go dig that up really quick. While you're looking that up, I'll say um, I actually checked Undercover Tourist right before we started recording um, just to see because I don't I don't really know how it'll affect them. And they do still have tickets for sale that do not require a start date. um, And it's probably going to be a lot better deal. So if you're planning on going in like the next I don't know, a year or so, and you have the money now to go ahead and buy your tickets, I would go to undercovertourist.com and buy them. Um, they're a very reputable site for selling tickets. It's the only place online that I will buy mine besides from Disney. Um, so I would definitely check it out. Okay. So I found an email and it kind of ties into all of this. Um, first of all, I want to say I'm really sorry that I didn't see this until yesterday. So listener Tyler if you're listening I greatly apologize for this Um, but they sent us a message from our podcast page and they said hey I'm an avid listener it's my current favorite hoping you see this and might be able to give me an opinion today I'm sorry Um, 
But if not, no worries. I've been planning a trip for January. And of course, tomorrow Disney is implementing the new price changes. Um, it hadn't occurred to me until right now. But in your opinion, if you were in my shoes, would you just buy the tickets and book the hotel reservations today before the new pricing comes into effect? I was also going to wait a bit longer just to figure out some logistics. But should I book now and figure out the logistics later? I'm afraid the pricing is going to go up pretty tight on and I got to backtrack on that one. I'm just afraid of the pricing going up and I'm pretty tight on money for the price of my trip. Seven day park hopper with an eight day stay at pop century actually feels like a pretty good deal for what I have right now. Thanks for reading Tyler. So I'm going to say what I responded in my email that was like three days late on this one. Um, but if you're ever thinking about booking a Walt Disney world trip, but you're not sure about something involving like price changes or room deals, you can book all of that and then like retroactively upgrade it. So say like, you know, you're booking a trip for January next year and you didn't see like a, a resort discount or deal or anything. You can go in, plug that, and then later go into your reservations as Disney releases stuff and update your reservation if you can get a better deal through them. That's worked for me a couple times. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And they're never going to lower prices. So if it's a situation like tickets, it's pretty much always better. And I won't say going forward just because we don't really know how this date um, is going to work out or the thing with like tickets requiring dates. But pretty much if they say they're about to raise prices or change prices, they're only going up. They're not going to go down. So you really can't hurt yourself. Yeah. And again, I'm really sorry for only getting to that like two days ago. <laughs> I saw that and it came in on the 15th. I responded on the 17th and I looked at it and I was like, oh gosh, I should have checked our email sooner. <laughs> uh, all right. So are we ready to dive into our topic this week? Let's well, do it. Before, I don't know if, if you want to or not, but should we announce? Oh the yeah, sure. Okay. Housekeeping oh. stuff since that's kind of where we are right now. Um, we didn't have any other emails besides that one from Evan, but we do have some exciting news. Um, we have, as of right now, launched our official Station 71 website. Um, it's www.station71podcast.com. We could not reserve station71.com because some fire company has that. <laughs> um, but the plan for that right now is going to be all of our episode show notes are going to be on there because there's some weird iTunes restrictions with how many characters and stuff you can put in there. So I'm going to try to do more detailed show notes on there. Um, we're going to try to maybe post some articles and things like that. Can't promise because we're all kind of, we have some weird schedules sometimes. Um, but really this is going to be probably the best place to get all of your information from us outside of the podcast. Um, it also has this really cool thing where you can follow us through email and you can get updates when we post things on there. So be sure to check that out. Um, and there may be some other cool features rolling out in the future. Yeah. And it's yeah. Station 71 podcast, the numerals, like 7 one, yes, not spelled out. correct. So that's exciting. I feel a little more professional now. <laughs> it definitely looks professional. Thanks, guys. So all that said, I would say now we're probably ready to dive into our, uh, our topic this week. So we are going to be discussing our yep. top three quick services we decided on, right? Our three yep. favorite and three least favorite, right? Yep. Oh, I didn't do least favorite, but I can definitely come up with that really quick. I guess it depends on how much we have time for. We'll just talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be talking about quick service this week. We're going to be talking about some good and maybe some bad. Uh, we'll see what happens. So I guess I can start this off with my number three. I have like a list of six here and it was very hard to pick my top three um i want to say this first because i usually don't do quick service like plan to go there so this was like exceptionally hard for me <laughs> um so my number three is katsura grill in epcot um i think that this is like one of my I don't go to it as much as I do my other two. Um, but if I'm in Epcot and I want like 
quick counter service uh, Japanese food. This is a really good place to go. It's usually pretty quiet when I've been there, um, but really good food, nice atmosphere, kind of tucked off into the back. Yeah, I would agree. That's a that's a good one. I don't go there very often either, but I really like the, uh, I don't know if they still have this, but they had green tea ice cream at one point. Think they do? It's, and it's really delicious. I've never eaten there. I haven't either. <laughs> so am I up next? Yes. So we'll go you, Brian, Kirsten, and then we'll go in reverse. Okay. I'm going to say for my number three, and I'm not going to try and butcher this, but the little French bakery in the back of the France Pavilion, because I feel like there are just so many options and I've never had anything that was not good there. That's a really good one. I like to do breakfast there because you can use a snack credit for a lot of things that are on their menu. And you can get a baguette in a bag and take it with you. <laughs> Eat it as you walk around World Showcase, which I've totally done before. That's actually on my list also. Um, that's like my number one. So, Really? Oh, nice. I mean, I'll go ahead and talk about it now. Um, I... I don't generally eat uh, pork or beef, but I that's my one exception is when I go there, I get a ham and cheese croissant and chocolate mousse for lunch, like clockwork. Like, I would eat that for lunch every single day I was in Disney World. I mean, it's my favorite thing. Their ham and cheese croissant is ridiculous. It's so good. I mean, it's like better than any ham and cheese croissant I can make myself or buy anywhere else. I don't know why it's so magical, but it is. Um, that's definitely my favorite, favorite, favorite place. And like all the pastries, it's just uh, everything. Mm, yes, the pastries. Yes, I just, I wish they had more seating. Yeah, there is very little seating. There's lots of like standing room. They have those like little standing tables, but nobody wants to stand at Disney World when they're eating because they've been standing all day. Yeah, and it's like that's a constant place where when it rains, everybody ends up there. And so mm-hmm. it's like there's no room at all, especially if you're actually trying to eat and not just stay out of the rain. Yeah. Really? I, whenever we go there for breakfast, I don't think I've ever actually needed like a seat. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of open seats open, but no. Not, it's, not. it's usually pretty crowded at lunchtime or whenever I go. Hmm. It's like my hmm. biggest complaint. So on to me. All right. Um, Say my number three is Columbia Harbor House. I really love the theming here. I like the food. I think it's a little different. You know, you get much better, I think, than your standard Disney fare here. And one thing that this has that a lot of other quick service restaurants at Disney don't have is a good bit of seating. I almost never have trouble finding a seat here. And that earns it some bonus points in my book. It is deceptively big. It really is. Like, you see it from the outside, and I I think a lot of people don't, like, take into account how much seating there is upstairs. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That was on my honorable mentions. Oh, and fun fact, all of the... And if y'all know more about this, um, please correct me. I don't want to say anything wrong. But all of, like, the paintings or pictures on the wall um i think it's in a particular room or something are all ships that were wrecked like ghost ships and you know it's right across from the haunted mm-hmm. mansion there's one section of the restaurant that's pretty closely tied in with the haunted mansion there's a actually some backstory like between the two so it's definitely one of uh for the disney history buffs to do some digging into if that kind of stuff tickles your fancy Oh, Kirsten. Oh, me. <laughs> um, I really struggled with, like, putting these in order. Um, anyway. It's okay. You get two in a row. I know. Uh, my number three is Wolfgang Puck Express at Disney <laughs> Springs. I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Not the big one that's, like, down towards Bongo's or whatever. The small one, it's, like, by the Christmas shop way back in the corner. 
um, overpass Earl of Sandwich. It's so good. I love it. And my favorite thing is it's very expensive for a, for a, a, a quick service credit. So if you're on the dining plan and you want to get basically like a table service priced meal, this is the place to go because I'm pretty sure the um, dish that I usually get there is like $17 or something. And that's just the entree part. And it's still considered a quick service credit. So anytime wow. I was on the dining plan, I always went there, um, especially when I worked there and we had visitors and then they would leave in their last day. We had credits to use. We would always go there to use up our quick service credits because it's like a really great value <laughs> and it's good. Nice. It's your turn again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and I already said my number one, so I'm done. Dang. Um, okay. <laughs> my number two favorite is Sunshine Seasons. Um, I just think they have, like, a bunch of different stuff. They have a lot of options that are vegetarian and, you know, for other dietary needs um, and definitely not your standard, you know, burgers and chicken or whatever. Um, and their chocolate cake is to die for. Um and there's tons of seating and I just love the atmosphere to me there's really only two places like two quick services up front there's that or electric umbrella and I don't know why anybody would ever go to electric umbrella when sunshine seasons is right there (laughs) yeah sunshine seasons was going to be one of my honorable mentions but it didn't make my top three I I like the food here but I have to disagree with you on liking the atmosphere i feel like this is the one that feels too much like a mall food court for my liking maybe i just like malls <laughs> <laughs> i think it's because it's by living with the land and like sometimes you can smell the living with the land which is really weird but you know that like boat oh, no, rides just have a typical smell and i just really like it yeah i see i really like the food and i struggled like because I, I put this as an honorable mention for the bad and it was more just because like that this feels like one that could end up in a Disney resort and be like their quick service hub, which isn't awful, but it's not like incredible either. I can see that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I just haven't been there in a while. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, my number two is Casey's. I feel like I've eaten at this restaurant easily more than any other Disney restaurant. Easy to do. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, it's it's generally pretty, you know, simple stuff. I mean, it's mostly hot dogs. I love the corn dog nuggets. I think the fries are incredible. Fries are amazing. The new fries or the old fries? Because I'm still bitter about them changing their fries. They will never I, make a top list for me because of that. I I I don't know. I like both of them as long as they're the, like thinner shoestring type ones. I'm cool with that. So yeah, those are the ones I like. I don't know. I don't remember the old fries though. I mean, they were like everywhere else, but they just tasted so much better for some reason. I don't know why, but they were way better than anything at Cosmics or whatever. And they made them those stupid shoestring things. Oh man, those are the best. I love them. Yeah, I literally yeah. every time I go to Magic Kingdom, pretty much get some fries from Casey's. Mm-hmm. And I guess one thing that I like about this really is that. You have all of the staple stuff, you know, the hot dogs and the corn dog stuff that's always there. But then, you know, they always do the, like, rotating specialty dog, which I think is pretty cool to help mix it up. Yeah, those, like, uh, I don't know, however long they are, ones that I see people walking around with are insane, though. <laughs> I'm just like, what even? Yeah. And I'll say, in contrast with Columbia Harbor House, the one negative thing about Casey's is that that one it's always extremely crowded and waiting in line is usually a pain and there's never anywhere to sit so like no seating i kind of get it in in a sense because a lot of the seating's outside and the more that you increase that size of the seating area the more you start cutting into the hub and main street and you don't really want to do that but at the same time it's obviously extremely popular 
and you don't have enough seats for everybody. So it's kind of a balancing act. I feel like every time we eat there, we end up having to cross and sit in front of the um, the plaza, mm-hmm. like in the ice cream parlor, and it's like the, a game of Frogger where you're so scared <laughs> that somebody's going to knock into you and like your food's going to go all over the ground. <laughs> yeah, or you can be a true Disney fan and just eat off the trash can. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is unsanitary. <laughs> So convenient. It's just when you're done, it's right there. Boom. It's like a rite of passage. The tables of food and wine festival. <laughs> right? <Yep>. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so my yes. turn? All right. My number two is, I don't know if this is kind of cheating, but I'm going to say be our guest because it's not table service until dinner time. I because, see, I had it down as my number three, and then I wasn't sure because like I had be our guest lunch down. I so. think it counts. That's I think it counts yeah, too. that's what I put. I think yeah. it's fair. Yeah, because I mean, this is by far one of the best, like as far as theming goes, especially for quick service. But just in general, like is absolutely incredible. It's just like you stepped into the movie, and and the food's pretty good too. So, and that, like, before, like, magic bands, I guess, were a real big thing, how they did that. I mean, I guess they still do it with the magic bands, but I think it was cooler with the Enchanted Rose, where you'd, like, take it to your table. I'm like, I don't understand how this works at all, but I like it. I think that's the coolest thing that they could have done, too, is, like, they make it a quick service without making it have, like, that weird quick service, I have to go pick up my food at a counter thing. Like, the fact that you can go sit down at your table and they'll bring you your food is just... It makes it so much better. better. And they just find you magically. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. But, yeah. So that was my pick for number two. So, I've been crossing stuff off of here because Be Our Guest was like kind of floating around on my list, but I, like Brian, wasn't really sure about if it counted. So, that's an honorable mention for me, but I have my one and two, and since I go both times. I'm just going to say both of them. My number two is Pecos Bills. Um, I don't know if this is like a good quick service or I've just been here so much that it's become like part of my Disney tradition. (laughs) Um, I'm kind of starting to feel like that too. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's, it's because I really like this restaurant where it's like, I have some weird nostalgia with it, but we ate here a lot when I was younger and it's usually all right food. I think it's uh, with me, this is like a good spot to get food at this part of the park. (laughs) So I'm good with that. Um, it's like the only spot in that. Exactly. I mean, you could go further down and go into like Liberty square, but when you're hungry and you're, you know, near splash mountain, this is the only thing that you can really stop at. (laughs) Um, so I vote that for my number two, but my number one, which really shouldn't be much of a surprise to anyone, is Cosmic Rays. Yeah, Cosmic Rays was one of my honorable mentions. I I like it, but I was and I'm very nostalgic about it. But I I was trying really hard to like judge food and not just like I don't know. I just felt like if people are going to eat there, that's what I was trying to do. (laughs) But I agree with the love of Cosmics. Well, and that's the thing. Like I. It's weird because you you asked us earlier, like, are we doing everything? And I said overall, but then, like, I kind of realized that one Pecos Bills, like, I'm pretty sure that that's just nostalgia and it's probably really not that good of a food. And I know, I know that Cosmic <laughs> Rays isn't. Like, I really like Cosmic Rays for Sunny Eclipse and that's the only reason that I really like it. So I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> like, I don't necessarily love Cosmic Rays, but, like, I love that it exists. You know, I love that Disney took and put an animatronic in a quick service restaurant. The food is, you know, yeah, it's okay, but it's what you'd expect from quick service. Right. right. It's your standard park fare for quick service. Yeah. It's just such a like Disney, like you wouldn't go to another theme park and have a restaurant with a singing alien. (laughs) Like, I don't know, serenading you. I don't know. It's just so, like classic Disney, not IP, just good entertainment. Mm-hmm. I have two honorable mentions, but I'm going to wait till you guys all finish your stuff so I can say these because I don't know if... Y'all cheat, man. I'm going to start doing honorable mentions <laughs> for everything. 
Well, no, these were ones that like I definitely I liked, but I had a hard time finding a spot for them. Well, I have those too. So, so <laughs> then you can list some honorable mentions. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of just made my list and then narrowed it down to the three and figured I would mention it if someone else brought it up. Yeah, that's kind of how I do mine, too. (laughs) So, my turn? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this back and forth thing now. (laughs) Another way to end. (laughs) Right. So, my number one, to no one's surprise probably, is Satuli Canteen in Pandora because I think it is the most unique quick service restaurant on property. It has, for lack of a better term, weird entrees, but they're good. Mm -hmm. And those little pods are so delicious. I think about them all the time. Like I would say on a weekly basis, because you can't like, I know that that bao buns you can find a lot of places, but I cannot find them locally here. And I just wish that I could, because I would eat them every day. (laughs) I've actually never had the bao buns, but I do love Tuli Canteen. It's my number one, too. Nice. Yeah. I think, I really, really think this is, like, I mean, you're definitely getting much higher than, you know, quick service food at a quick service restaurant. Yeah, I would say that this and Be Our Guest are as close to table service as quick service gets. And not even, like, bottom tier table service. This is, like you know, mid to upper, you know, affordable table service food, I think, for, you know, relatively cheap and the convenience of getting it quickly. Mm-hmm. But, Plus they use real dishes, which I really like. I think that adds a lot to the experience. Mm-hmm. It's just something about eating with plastic silverware that makes you feel cheap. Yeah, I love this restaurant because... Usually I have this thing, like, especially going to Disney all the time, I, and I do this outside of Disney too, but, like, for every restaurant, I usually have, like, one meal that I get at that restaurant, and it's like, I know what I'm getting when I go to that restaurant, like, that's what I want. And, like, at Satuli Canteen, I normally get, like, the same, like, protein and base and everything, but because they have all the different sauces that you can try out, like, the sauce is, like, my, my chance to, like, experiment and kind of try something new each time but also get something that I know I'm going to like. And they generally rotate like the sauces and stuff a lot, so you can try different things each time. It's funny that you say that cuz like I've never had anything except for the bao buns really? because I like I like them so much that I just can't fathom getting something else. <laughs> but I think that the sides are also really good like they have those like vegetable chips i think whatever they are that are really good i've seen them i've never had them though yeah those are really good and then they have a vegetable slaw which i don't normally like slaws of sorts but this is one that i actually did really like Mm -hmm. well i'm gonna say my honorable mention and Mm -hmm. mine was contempo cafe and like I know it's not because of the food. The food is really good, but that's definitely a nostalgia one for me. But if I'm going to go eat for any reason at a quick service on the monorail line, I'm going to Contempo Cafe. I hate, hate, hate the Grand Floridian quick service. I think it's terrible, um, a waste of time, awful, don't eat there. Um, And I'm really just so-so on the ones at the Poly, and I know most people like them a lot. But I personally believe Contempo Cafe is the the best one. I've never eaten there. Does anybody else have honorable mentions? Because I have two. I don't. So um, you can go ahead. I have an honorable mention, but I'm going to wait to see if it's on someone's worst list. <laughs> I... <laughs> Because I have a feeling it might be. This sounds fun. So <laughs> my two that I have are Sleepy Hollow and Yak and Yeti. I don't think that Yak and Yeti is like, there's not enough room for that to be considered like one of my favorite ones, but the food is pretty okay. Um, I do like Yak and Yeti. And it's, it's one that like you can easily forget about. I think that's usually like mm-hmm. my choice or was my choice in Animal Kingdom. Now I have to try Satouli Canteen, so I can't say anything about that. Um, and Sleepy Hollow is good, but it's one of those that, like, there's not enough on their menu for me to consider that my best. So I'm going to keep that up there, too. 
So I guess since we're on to the worst, Kirsten can start us off. <laughs> I I got three, so I, I came up with a list while we were talking. My number three really- is Electric Umbrella. I just mentioned it, but I yep. just think that it's so basic. Like you're in Epcot with all these amazing quick services at the World Showcase, and then you have Sunshine Season, which is really good, and then you have electric umbrella why would you go there (laughs) don't waste your time seriously go somewhere else yep that's my number two and for pretty much the same reason like it's not absolutely terrible but come on you're at epcot like this is probably the best park for dining while you're at disney and you have so many options do a little research you know i think that because that's my number three actually but i think that it's funny that there's these restaurants in the front of Epcot when there's so much good food throughout World Showcase. And I don't know uh-huh. if that like makes all of these worse than they are because I, I know that this is pretty bad food. But like that might also be the reason that I'm not too fond of Sunshine Seasons because there's just so much other food around in this park. Yeah. That's why like I don't God, I can't remember eating at a restaurant in Future World. Hey, when I go to Epcot, I just, I normally don't even plan either. You know, I, I just like to walk around World Showcase until like something grabs me. So my number three is Backlot Express. I and think this is like, two. okay, <laughs> this is just, I think probably the absolute most forgettable restaurant at yeah. all of Disney. Like it's like tucked back in the corner and Like, really, unless you're, like, looking for a bathroom and, like, happen to go there because this is the closest one. Like, I feel like people don't even realize there's a restaurant here. The theming's just terrible. Uh, Just, yeah, I mean, is there theming? I don't get it. I mean, it's like it kind of made sense when the Backlot Tour was there, Mm -hmm. but it's not now. This is, yeah. And this is now, it's just, like, one of those, like, sad holdover places in Disney that it's just, like... You know, it, it's it, it's just there. You know, it's there because they don't have anything else to put there. It's not like they're going to continue improving it or anything like that. It's 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 going to be there until something else comes to tear down and replace it with. So, yeah, this I is could my... describe so many things at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Mm-hmm. Um, that is also my number three and for very same reasons, especially because when I think about the theming, it reminds me of the Spider-Man 3D ride queue, which is very depressing as well, as we've mentioned before. I just looks like so dated and like crusty. Yeah. Yeah. I don't You know what else looks dated and crusty? Oh no. Bob I can't wait. Oh, that was you, a good one. I don't think you should be bashing him <laughs> if you want him to bring back wishes, Kirsten. <laughs> well, I wasn't oh even gosh. really tweeting at him forever, so. <laughs> I'm so sorry I had to break that to you. Oh, uh, man. I would have I would have died if that account would have, like, messaged you back <laughs> and you would have thought it was actually him. Yeah, oh me too. Oh, my gosh. I'm having a hard time choosing between my number two and my number one. So I'm going to go with my number two as Pizza Fari because it's glorified cafeteria pizza and the (laughs) costumes are so ugly. (laughs) I'm sorry. There it is. They are like, I know it's like African or whatever, but no, they're just literally like big red, like a costumes with blocky weird shapes it reminds me of like a roller skating rink in the 90s i was gonna say like it looks like something straight out of the 80s which doesn't make sense because it opened up in the late 90s so i don't understand how that's (laughs) even possible kirsten you sounded surprised i just have like a very okay so the disney pizza and i i feel like they've changed it even in recent years but the disney pizza that we all remember like there's something about that pizza and i just have to have one yeah it's really bad and it's like (laughs) so delicious i just love it so i like going to pizza fari and getting my nasty pizza game on Um, (laughs) 
because it just makes me happy. And I love that's there. The smallest hidden Mickey in Disney World is in Pizza Bar, hidden somewhere. So yeah, go find it while you eat pizza. But, hmm. Well, that's kind of cool. But I just feel like the pizza. Well, first of all, most of it's like flatbreads, which isn't even like pizza pizza. Yeah, now because it used to be like real pizza, and now it's flatbread, and I really don't like that. <laughs> but. And then your only other option is like the like individual pizzas that are just like delicious. No, they're not. They're the pizza sauce is like sweet. It's it's like gross sweet tomatoes. I just have to have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think that Disney pizza is not good pizza. I'm sorry, Kirsten. I would agree. <laughs> Except for Via Napoli. Yeah, that that might be why I don't like Disney pizza. Like Via Napoli is just so good; it set that bar too high for and me. And the waiters are hot <laughs> <laughs> every time. Um, I'm gonna give my number two since my three and number two are both crossed off. So I'm gonna pull one from an honorable mention for this one. Um, I put the launching pad, and I think that I don't like this one. Because it's in a really weird spot. There's not a lot of seating and it's really not too much special. Yeah, it's basically a people got tired in Tomorrowland. Let's sit here. <laughs> no one's actually there for the lunching pad. That's actually very true. You know, I think if you if you're keeping up with this, like we got two in a row here. Things to look out for uh, for Disney dining are like puns in the name of the restaurant. <laughs> Well, no, here's the other one that I'm going to give away my, my number one with, with this one. But the worst thing to look out for is any food in Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have the same number one. Yeah. Yep. That's really interesting because my number one is anywhere that serves Mickey pretzels. Ooh. <laughs> my number two, I might get some hate for this, but Restaurantosaurus. That I debated was, putting that on mine. That was the honorable mention I wanted to the wait and see. The only good thing is the puns. That's the only <laughs> good thing. I personally enjoy the puns, but not the food. Yeah, that was my honorable mentions on my favorites list that I was like, someone's probably going to put this on their least favorites list. But I also really like the theming and the puns, but also really like their uh, black bean burger. So... Well, that's understandable. Hmm. You also have to take into account that, you know, it's part of the storyline for... Exactly. The incredible Chester's and Hester's area. Oh, I hate it. Which should <laughs> die in a fire. Oh, I'm so glad someone else on this show hates that part. <laughs> like, it's, it was... It hates was that a long parking time. lot? Oh it's been gosh. a long time since someone else has hated that as much as, as I have on here. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, that was my number two. Number I yeah, we are on number one now. Is it my turn again? Well, yes, we can I think just we go all, ahead. Didn't we all say our number ones except for you, Kirsten? Well, Brian and I technically didn't say it, but it's. Understood. I have a feeling that they're all three the same. Is. Wait, let's say it on the count of three. Okay, ready? One, two, three. ABC, ABC commissary. commissary. <laughs> yes. Uh. Worst there, ever, don't eat here. The end. Yeah. There's, like, these other restaurants, it's like, I don't like them, and I say, okay, I'm not going to eat there. It's like, I, I I hate that this even exists. I hate this. It All it is is a giant <laughs> ad for ABC while you're trying to eat, and the food's not even good. So, <laughs> Brian's I, real passionate about this one. I, I mean, it is Dude, really that bad. It. it is. It really is. Like, I'll tell you a story. The first time that I ever went to Disney World, I was in ninth grade. I went with my family, um, and we didn't know anything about Disney World at that point. And I guess, I mean, the internet was a thing, but it wasn't like it is today. And so we didn't know. We had no reservations. We didn't know what we were doing. Like, and so we ended up, like, our Epcot date, we ate an electric umbrella, okay? So we were that clueless. And we still all remember ABC Commissary as the absolutely worst place we eat. We ate, and I've not eaten there since then because it was that bad. So, so. Here, here are my feelings summed up by this TripAdvisor ad with one star. Or with one star. <laughs> so the title of this um, 
review is regret. And it's <laughs> <laughs> and it says MGM slash DHS has very limited lunch options compared to other parks. We always end up eating at the ABC commissary and regretting it. The burgers are plain and generic. The chicken in the salad is fatty and the service is very slow. They forgot to give us salad dressing and it took 15 minutes for the workers to come to our attention at the counter. The staff here is very slow and apathetic. And I think that just that sums it up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. Um, I will say the only place that I Hollywood Studios really does have terrible options um, for quick service. And my favorite place to go and they're not open long hours. It's um, only lunchtime is starring roles kind of right by the entrance um, where like the big guide map area is. Um that's definitely my favorite place. If anybody's desperate for a lunch option, I would go there. Yeah. And it's so, not even anything fancy, but the sandwiches are good and a little different. And I don't know, it's better than anything else. So I've never actually eaten at ABC commissary, which I think is a testament to how bad it is because I walked in it once and was like, nah. And that, is my one and only experience with it. So I feel like if I had eaten here or actually gotten the experience that I might be on the same team as all of you guys, but. I think it should speak pretty loudly that you can go in a crowded Hollywood studios that, like we said, has very limited options and ABC commissary is still like, is not crowded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that doesn't mean it's a hidden gem, people. That means it's still a hidden gem. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it is certainly not. for some restaurants, that does mean that it's a hidden gem. But, like, the, the funny thing about this is, like, if you think about what it, it is, it's it literally does that perfectly. But why would anyone want that here? Like, it's... <laughs> right, like, it, it's like, what if we had a food court that was, food, that was like, you know... Modeled after a, a food court. Right? <laughs> no. Exactly. Like, who decided that we needed the ABC food court in Hollywood Studios? Yeah. Like, I don't know if y'all have experience with um, working at a big place like Disney World where they have an employee food court, actually. Um, because Disney does have backstage, you know, food courts for their employees. And they're run by uh, Aramark. And they're terrible. And that's basically what ABC Commissary is, but for guests. Like, it's bad. They just use the, like, leftover food that y'all don't eat and put it out. (laughs) Probably so. (laughs) Or the other way around. We get Uh, leftover food from ABC Commissary. Gross. But, yeah, I hate, like, all the the park around it, too. It's just, like, it's filled with the ABC billboards and stuff. Like, whatever stupid shows on ABC that they're trying to push that one. Hey, moment. not all the shows on ABC are stupid, just saying. And not all of them. But, but most of them. Yeah. hmm Yeah. Definitely it's, agree. It's so weird to say that because that's, like, what it intends to do. And I feel like you guys use that argument a lot for Chester and Hester's, but, like, I just don't think I need this. <laughs> This is not the same. Mm, no. <laughs> that is not a fair comparison. It does, though. That's the thing, because every time it gets brought up, you guys are like, well, yeah, but this is the theme. And if you understand the theme, it works really well. I'm going to say, yeah, hold on, what? hold on. I understand the theme here. <laughs> and I don't need it. I still don't understand. Like, I still don't need the theme for Chester and Hester's. <laughs> I feel like Mario just not. put his finger up and shook it at me I through, through the phone. I hate it because I did that. Uh, uh, at least Chester uh, Hester's isn't trying to sell you on a TV show, though. Yeah, but in a park no. that's like... The, like They're trying to sell you on a roadside carnival yeah. run by dinosaur carnies. What's I mean, worse? Really. Oh, uh, my gosh. So, Beth, what's your number one since we got ours out? Oh, I said earlier, my number one is everywhere that serves Mickey pretzels. Because oh. that oh, yeah, is. You really hate those, don't that you? That is literally like when I think of all of the food that I've ever had at Disney World, the one thing that I truly would never get again is a Mickey pretzel. And it's just like, I, I don't get it. Have these people that love Mickey pretzels never been to Auntie Anne's? Like, do they not know what an actual soft pretzel ta- is supposed to taste like? Maybe, maybe I would like it. Maybe I would like it if 
I didn't know what a soft pretzel was supposed to taste like. If I didn't know the proper texture of a soft pretzel, which, spoiler alert, it's soft, not chewy. (laughs) I had a friend that was just down there for her wedding, and she texted me and was like telling me all these different details about what was going on while they were in the parks. And she's like, I have to go get a Mickey pretzel. I haven't done that yet on this trip. And I went, no, no, you really don't. (laughs) I haven't done that on like my last six trips. Probably (laughs) you'll survive. friend. I've never had one. I don't like pretzels. Have you ever, but Kirsten, have you been to Auntie Anne's? (laughs) And you don't like pretzels. Beth is like trying to sell us on Auntie Anne's this episode. (laughs) Oh my gosh! This episode sponsored are you being by. Sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did, actually I did work for Auntie Anne's for like a summer, my freshman year of college. But that's not I. The reason I went to work there is because I love their pretzels so much. And do you like the sweet ones or the salty ones? I like both, but I definitely prefer the original salted. It's like mm. my fave. Asking the important question. Yes. So, I had. S- honorable mentions for this one too but mine are more kind of comedical than actually honorable mentions i don't know if you guys had any i mean i Um, talked about how i hate the grand Floridian cafe but (laughs) that's a fair one that's an honorable mention so i had two that i don't necessarily like hate hate but i think they could have been done better um and that's sunshine seasons and pinocchio village house like i said i don't hate it but it's more that like it feels like a mall food court to me and village house doesn't have enough seating ever for the like lackluster food that they have Mm -hmm. (laughs) plus they have like weird hours every time i feel like i've tried to go in there they're like closing at six or seven p.m. yeah that's definitely true but then my last one and this is the only reason i'm putting this on here is because the menu looks really bad and it's never open and that's tortuga tavern (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was my honorable I mean can it be a least favorite if nobody's ever eaten nobody in the history of the world I mean like I looked up the menu and their entrees are chicken barbecue short rib short rib topped all beef hot dog all beef hot dog combo which is just a hot dog and chips a turkey leg and pepper jack pretzel so I think that that counts <laughs> so. that is weird yeah, and it's never open. Like I thought that was supposed to be like the test kitchen, isn't it? I feel I like that's a rumor at this point. Like I don't think anyone really knows. What are they testing? <laughs> turkey legs. Can we just agree that turkey legs are not a snack or a quick service option? Like it that should not be a food that should be served in any park, but No. And it looks like absolutely barbaric when people try to eat it. Literally the exact like, yeah. word I was gonna use. <laughs> I don't care who you are. You cannot look attractive eating a turkey <laughs> leg at Disney World. Challenge accepted. No, I don't eat those either, so. I think it's just, like, people want to feel that, like, weird primal instinct. Like, yeah, I used to be a caveman. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a message from, was it a message or was it a comment on our Facebook? I can't remember. It was a message, yeah. Okay, we got a message from one of our listeners uh, Joshua via Facebook about our rants episode. He said, uh, I did my CP back in 2010 and he absolutely hated how some of the college kids acted. He went there to work and learn, um, not post on Facebook and party. And he said they walk around like they own the whole park. Um, basically the same thing that I said about CPs. And that was just his old time, his quote unquote old man rant about why full timers <laughs> hate CPs. And I kind of agreed with that. (laughs) I'm offended that he called himself old because I did my CP in 2011. So what does that make me old? Um, I was about to say, I graduated college in 2012. So I'm offended as well. (laughs) Sweet summer child. (laughs) um, Yeah, I would agree. Like, so Instagram wasn't even a thing whenever I was there, which that also should tell you that I am old. Man, was this the geriatric edition? <laughs> <laughs> you guys will understand one day. Yeah. Um, but, and I think it's probably a lot worse now because I definitely, I don't know if y'all talked about like the whole social media, like Insta famous. Me, I talked about that mm-hmm. a lot. But Influencers. I feel like most of those um, 
kids are CPs and it's like kind of ridiculous at this point. Like it's insane. I don't know. I really, maybe I'm just bitter because Instagram wasn't a thing. And maybe if I were there now, I would be one of those girls. I don't know. But yeah, no, it's stupid. And I definitely like my roommates, we we were amazingly lucky to have a really good um, apartment and we were like legit. We were all kind of older um, graduating from college very quickly. We weren't like freshmen. Um, but yeah, I definitely worked with some people who were only there to like go out on the party bus on weekends. And like, they all lived at Vista way, which has a very inappropriate nickname. Um, yeah. So send it in the, uh, group chat. (laughs) I can definitely see it. And I think, I don't know. I think that Disney loves to use college programmers because there's an unlimited supply of college students every year who want to come spend a semester at Disney World and they're very starstruck and they think that it will actually get their foot in the door and it really won't. Like, unless you are amazing or you already know somebody or you happen to meet somebody really important, like, it's not going to do anything for you. Like, I still know people who... I was on a program with and they thought like that was their in and they went on to do professional internships, which are, you know, a lot more exclusive. And they're still just like working a regular hourly job in the parks. Like they're not in an office. They don't have a salary. It didn't get them in the door. So I'm kind of over it, honestly. (laughs) Like they use us for cheap labor um, and then, you know, send you off with a pat on the back and thanks for nothing, basically. That's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I never did the college program, but I don't know. I did my fair share of partying in college in general, but I feel like now that I'm older, like the spots that I used to hang out are super like unappealing to me because of the crowds that surround it. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old or because the generations are getting trashier, but... <laughs> Even though I wasn't a CP, I can still semi-relate to this. Yeah. So there's my CP rant. Yeah. Well, that was that was mostly what I said about it when we talked, was that, like, I think the college program does some, like, good things in regards to what you were saying about how people that, like, want to work there maybe just, you know, get the chance to work there. Um, but at the same time, it also does a lot for people that think that they have some kind of celebrity status and I'm not, I'm not cool with that. Cool. So did you guys have anything else you wanted to talk about this week? If anybody listening likes ABC commissary, you want to hear about it. Tell us everything and tell us what's wrong. <laughs> they probably like vinegar based barbecue sauce. They probably too. like Chester and Hester's too. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. They probably even like country bears. Oh. Oh wow. my gosh, oh my God. okay, it's getting personal. All right. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Station 71 Podcast. If you like what you heard in the show, subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you want to keep in touch with us, you can find us online at facebook.com backslash Station 71 Pod, Twitter at Station 71 Pod, Instagram at Station 71 Podcast, and you can send us a listener email to Station 71 Podcast at gmail.com or call us on our brand new Google Voice line at 561 899 6441. We hope you enjoyed your ride and we'll see you real soon. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.